Welcome to part two of my tutorial on flex data binding. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a few alternative uh, ways to bind objects within Flex and Flash. Um, in our first example, I'm going to talk about um, one way and two way binding. So, in our previous example, um, if I go ahead and run this, you can see that our slider bar, the value is bound to this text field. Um, now, if we were to type in, say, 80 in here, we would expect that um, the slider would also jump to 80. But it's not bound that way, because it only have a one-way bind between the value and the text box. So if we go back into our code, and similarly use the, the braces here for the binding, if we use this on our value attribute on the slider, by putting in the text input 1 and its text, um, if we go ahead and do that, and we need to typecast this into an integer in order for it to work correctly because it's being passed in as a string so we make it an int so that the value can be read so essentially here we just bound the text input text into the value so we go ahead and run we know that this value is going to be bound to the text field and our new code we just added so now if I put in negative 50 you see how the slider bar it's also bound to this text field will then jump to negative 50. So that now becomes a two-way binding between these two components. So that's the, one of the first techniques I want to talk about. Um, the second technique is going to be using the binding tag within the MXML. It's a binding component. Um, so I'm going to just make this zero. I'm going to remove all instances of binding that we have currently. So we'll take that out. So now neither of the um, components are bound to each other. So very similar to those curly braces that we use for binding inside the attributes. If we go ahead and make a binding component here, this component takes two parameters. It's going to take a source, which is going to be our, our text input and its text attribute. And this also will take a destination, which is going to be the H slider and its value is going to change. And so here's this. And like before, we need to make sure that we typecast this into an integer because a string cannot become the value attribute because it's an int. So here we just typecast it at. So now we go ahead and run. So we expect that this text input is now going to be bound to the slider again. So negative 50 results in the slider bar jumping to negative 50. So now this is just a one-way binding so let's go ahead and make this a two-way binding just by copying it down to the next line and our new source for this one is going to be a slider and its value and our new destination is going to be the exact opposite it's going to be text input and its text. So now that we have that in place, we need to also make sure that we have this typecast as a string. The value currently is an int, so now we need to make it a string so that this text attribute will accept it as an int or as a string. So you can see here we have one way binding at the top and the other binding here, so now it's become a two way binding. So let's go ahead and test that. So now the slider is bound to the text box and also the text box is bound to the slider. So 33 becomes that, and likewise. And that's pretty cool. So that's another technique by using the MXML. Um, this is the binding component. Um, we have one more technique real quick to go over. I'm going to delete both of those. So now this application, essentially, none of the components are bound. Um, one nice thing about the MXML is you can throw in a script tag and this essentially will let you um, write ActionScript 3 code in your MXML. Um, so I'm going to run a function, and this function is going to, I'm going to throw it an event on creation complete. So once this, everything's completed and created, um, I'm going to call this init function. And let's make that a private function here. Call it init. And we more things here. Okay, so now inside this init function, what I want to happen right at runtime, right whenever this everything is created, I want to use ActionScript 3 to bind my two components. And to do that, 
you create this binding utils. So let me show you. Inside of here, if you type in binding, you'll see that the very top one shows up. And it's an object, so dot notation. I want to get the property, bind properties function here. And what I'm going to pass in first is going to be the text input. And I'm going to tell it what attribute of text input do I want to use. So I use that. And then I'm going to put my destination, so it's going to be the slider object. And with a comma, and then I'm going to put what attribute I want to be changed or bound to. So by doing that, that's simple code. This is our, our source. And this is our de destination here. And let's go ahead and run it. And here you see that we just bound the text input exact opposite. So we bound the slider to the text input. And since I just showed you the example where this is not changing, we know it's one way bound. And we can go back and change that just by adding another binding utils. Instead of doing the text input, we're going to do the opposite. So again, just h slider. Put this value. Line those up. And in this example, we're going to put the text oops, input. And it's going to be this text attribute. So there's both of them set. And now we should have two way binding by using an action script 3 technique. So there's our first bound objects here. And if I go in here and change it to negative 40, negative 80, 80, you can see how it's jumping because it's bound again. Um, let's put 100 there and it resets. So today we just went over uh, some other techniques, um, binding utils inside of the um, action script 3, and we went over the binding component inside the MXML and also discuss one-way and two-way binding, all of which are really um, powerful tools with binding. And um, just so you know, there's many possible ways to do binding in Flex and Flash, which is, becomes very useful down the road. Um, thanks again, and look for more tutorials. Thanks.